How do you really convince people not to have a GoFundMe for their, um, as their bailout for their life insurance policy? It's your responsibility to not leave burdens for others behind. This is an act of love, really. This is showing that you think beyond just your own skin. It's amazing to me how many people think that, oh, 100000 or $200,000 should do that because there's different types of insurance for different types of needs. Do not depend on GoFundMe. Talk to Harlan Pickett. No matter where someone is, I'm gonna help them out. It's so important not to depend on even our social services because we don't wanna drain them either. You wanna be responsible for your life and the life of your loved ones. Well, dear viewers, this is uh, Shankar, Andrea, and we have Harlan here with us today. Howdy, y'all. Once a week, we talk about marketing and also about a month uh, that is important. And right now, we have National Health Insurance, Life Insurance Month. There we go. <laughs> And we thought, well, who better to ask about life insurance other than Harlan Pickett? Okay, great. Hey, I sure appreciate this opportunity very much. It is always a joy working with y'all, and I certainly am honored to be here today. It is very interesting because so many people look at life insurance in various different ways. Having been in this industry for a number of years, it's very, it's just so diverse people's thoughts on life insurance. But really, it comes down to a bottom line, in my opinion, that it's really your responsibility. It's your responsibility to not leave burdens for others behind. And I think many times we don't look at it that way. We look at it as, well, I'm going to leave them off too well. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not obviously not going to get the benefits of the life insurance. I'm not here anymore. And if that's the case, I don't want to leave them too much. Well, that's very flawed thinking, but I certainly have heard it more than once. And it's a, it's a very interesting concept that people saying they don't want their people to be too well. I, I want to make sure my kids don't have so much money that they don't know that they have to go out and get a job. I want to make sure that my wife's not too well off. I want her to, to, to have to, you know, go out there and at least have a worker have some more life and not have to, to just be set. But it's amazing to me how many people think that, oh, 100000 or $200,000 should do that. Really? Have you really thought about what you actually financially put into the household every year? If you're putting in $50,000 to the year, a year into the household because that's your income, and you think 100000 is going to help your family live for the next 20 years, you got some pretty flawed thinking there, buddy. And I think a lot of times you have to kind of bring that out into people's minds. One of the other things that's really changed a lot about life insurance in the last few years is that it used to tr truly be for other people. If I have a life insurance policy of say a million dollars on myself, there's no way I would ever benefit from that. Unless of course you had a whole life policy which got cash value. But that is not the case now because so many of these policies, including one that I recently signed up for in the last year also, have what's called living benefits. And those benefits pay you if you were to have any type of critical illness or a chronic illness, a, a chronic illness, so that you do receive benefits from that life insurance policy while you're still alive. And I think there's just so much mental about life insurance that people don't really understand all of it. They have a preconceived notion based on something, based on either their parents didn't believe in it, or they heard this or they heard that or from whatever place. Uh, it's just like having insurance through work. That's all well and good until you don't have that job anymore. And now you don't have that life insurance anymore. So what are you going to do? Well, if you've got some type of pre-existing condition, you may be doing without. There's just so much, there's so much to know that talking to someone other than just using the internet to try to learn all about it, and getting your quotes there, talking to someone who truly has a background in it and understands it and offers that advice for free, that's really what people should do. One question I have is, 
for I, I would say for most people when they leave college they start a job they haven't really started their family yet for most people starting a life insurance policy early is still a good idea also to build up some equity for themselves and for their families and i know that is something that is sometimes hard to understand for people and could you explain that a little bit why that is the case it's almost a a form of building up value for yourself and your family absolutely it is there's various different types of life insurance policies and the kind of policy right there you're really talking about is what's called a whole life policy. And in some cases, it could also be a universal life. But what you're doing there is all the money you're putting towards that policy, some of that is going into a cash value. If you're talking about a universal life, you can actually even play the stock market with that money if you want to. So it can truly be a fund that you use later on down the road into retirement. Many folks like to uh, have a lot of uh, grand. Uh, grandparents that like to have policies on their grandkids from when they're very young and those policies too can build a cash value that that child when they get into their 30s can use even as a down payment for a home and what a what a wonderful gift that grandparent has done now in making sure that their grandchild has a great head start in in this particular instance i'll tell you what that is that's some of the greatest success stories that I've heard of kids all of a sudden, not even realizing what they had, and then saying, oh, wow, I've got $30,000 right here that I didn't even know that I had that I can put towards a down payment. I really can buy a house now. And that's a, that's a big difference changer. Of course, many people do that also for college education. You can put that money in, in a policy such as that and take some of that money out to pay for college. But there are many benefits for those type policies. Uh, one of the things I think people think that they have to do is get all the insurance they'll ever need in one policy. And that's simply not the case because there's different types of insurance for different types of needs. And that's one of the things you find out whenever you sit down with a licensed broker that goes through what's considered a fact finder. And you go through that fact finder and figure out what exactly your needs are because your, your needs truly do change over your life too. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a good example of the fact that I have a daughter that's in high school and a son that's in college. If I were to pass away, my wife would still need to make sure she has the funds for my son to finish college and my daughter to complete her entire college experience. If we did not have my income coming in, then if they wanted to do that, the amount of debt that the family would have to go into in student loans, which there are many people around the country that have those too, would just be astronomical. And once again, as I said earlier, therefore it's my responsibility to make sure if something happens to my family, they can continue to live the life and have the dreams that they had when I was still here. And to me, that is vitally important, but that's not all just done with one policy. You have to have different policies for different things and for different times of your life, because that's really what's important is to make sure that you have the right amount at the right time in your life. Okay, one, one more question I have before I let Andrea ask her, her questions. Um, I heard, and this might be just a myth, so um, that's why I'm asking you here. I heard that when you have value in a life insurance policy, that gets special protection in so far as even if you owe money to the government or you are sued and you own uh, damages to someone, uh, that money is always protected. Is that true? Yes, sir, that is true. The, the cash value of a life insurance policy cannot be taken away by the government. It cannot be taken away if you have a bankruptcy or someone sues you for that, they, they cannot have that money, that is correct. That, I find that very, very interesting. Um, Andrea, I know you did quite some research. Um, what questions do you have for Harlan? Yeah, I have questions. I really I'm in trouble want... now. I'm in big trouble now again. <laughs> well, okay, so here's my whole thing. I feel like coming from the side of people who aren't just understanding life insurance as a way to improve the quality of their life if 
a main breadwinner, like a parent passes away or something like that, or a grandparent, I should say, um, who leaves insurance that would accumulate to like $30,000 that they can, can then spend on tuition or for whichever, but just the basic needs that really when this main person in the family is gone can send them into such a rough patch where they are just trying to survive because it's hard to put a roof over their heads or they don't have food or they don't get their medical um, assistance, their health assistance. That's what these social services are that a lot of people are leaning into and uh, they don't really take life insurance seriously enough to see how that can all be kind of prevented by taking these measures before you're in duress and making these pressing decisions, you know, um, I just wanted you to speak to because there's only 54 54% of households who have life insurance, but almost everybody has a basic idea of some of what you've spoken of, uh, although a lot of it is is new. What are your thoughts on that? And how do you really convince people not to have a GoFundMe for their, um, as their bailout for their life insurance policy? No, I, that is a, that's really a great question because it, it's very interesting how many people I have talked to that have told me that that's what their family would do. They would do a GoFundMe. And many reasons, I believe that happens is because people, for whatever reason, believe that life insurance is not affordable. They believe to get the amount of life insurance that they would require, let's just say you needed a, if we do everything and I need a million dollar policy, that's what I need to cover everything. But I can't afford $150 a month. Okay. Well, I'm just giving you an example. It could be a whole lot less than that, but I can't afford $150,000 a month. Okay. So that means we don't get a million dollar policy. Maybe we have to start out with a $200,000 policy. Well, if I can't get a million, I just won't do anything. Wait, well, how is that helping anybody? How is that helping your family get through any of the times? And once again, I think that that block happens many times because if you sit down and explain to people what their true need is, I think they're very shocked. They're very surprised at how much life insurance it would truly take to do all the things they want, to do all the things that they want and dream for their family in many cases. But the rea reality of it is, is those are wants and dreams. They're not absolute 100% necessities. What you said was very, very true. How many families can no longer live in that house? I've got to move somewhere else now because we can't afford the mortgage because someone has passed away. We can barely afford food. All of these things on top of the fact that they're going through a hugely emotional time of losing someone that was extremely important to them. And now they have all these financial things they have to deal with also. It is devastating to many, many families whenever these things happen. And you pointed out that when the main breadwinner passes away, these things can happen. Well, let me tell you something else. When the other person in the house is not the main breadwinner or may even be a stay at home mom or dad, it can have the same devastating effect if they haven't had any insurance. Many times people don't think about the other partner because they don't have a real job. And therefore, because they don't have that job, they're not bringing anything into the family, right? No, all they're doing is taking care of the kids, taking care of the house, taking Doing the, doing the dishes, doing the laundry, cooking the meals, going to the store, doing all of those other things that the person that's working doesn't have the time. Well, now that person that's working has to do those too, right? Where's that money coming from? Because they were doing, they didn't have to pay for childcare. They didn't have to pay for all these other things. Now they have to do that too, or they have to start taking care of the kids and doing the other things. Too. Well, now they can't make the same they were doing, right? There's no way that they can go out there and still have the same impact on their workforce and make the same income if they've got all the responsibilities that their spouse had to. So I think that's very overlooked many times. And whenever you explain that to someone, 
the light bulb so many times goes off they're like, oh my gosh, you're right. I don't know what I would do. If in my case, I lost Kelly, we would be devastated, no doubt. It would be a hugely emotional time, but all the things that she brings to the table and our relationship and with our children, I would have to fill that void too. There's no way I can continue to do my job with as many hours and at the level I do it now if we were to lose her. So there has to be something there to help us get through financially if we were to lose her. But it is, it is paramount that people understand that the emotional side of this is what truly is, is the block because people don't like to talk about this, right? They don't like to talk about what could happen. But as the old saying goes, there's only two things that are for sure, right? And that's death and taxes. And unfortunately, we have to understand the reality is there. And not talking about it is not going to make it go away. You know, if you don't send in your taxes for 10 years and you just cover your eyes every time that letter from the IRS comes in and throws it and throw it away, is that going to change the fact that those taxes are still due and they're coming after you? It is not. The same thing is going to happen that regardless of how much we cover our eyes and say, I don't want to talk about life insurance because then I got to talk about death. Whether you talk about it or not, it's coming. From the day we were born, we were all headed towards the other side. And that is something that we cannot stop. So having the conversation is just a natural part of life to have that conversation to make sure that your family and all of your things are taken care of when you're gone to make sure that other people aren't responsible for those. I love that because you really highlight the value that every member of the household brings to the home. And I think that that is certainly lost on a lot of people. And then I, of course, being a woman and also not necessarily being the main breadwinner, I would still say that a lot of people kind of lessen themselves and the value that they bring and what would happen, how devastating it would be to a household, uh, which is likely, right? If only 54% of households are actually covered under life insurance, the likelihood of something happening that really could put people under. I'm not talking about just a little bit, but a lot. The cost of our, our care, just even, uh, we know that most secondary um, income earners are women and they are still doing so much, like you said, childcare and cleaning and all of these things, if they were actually paid services, could be just as, as overwhelming. And you also bring up that what the second thing that I was going to ask you about, which is why are people so afraid of talking about life insurance? Why do they run the other direction when it is so crucial and important to think of a plan? And I also wanted to know what is happening now that people are forced to reckon with the fact that this pandemic uh, really kind of forcing a lot of people to see that death is imminent for some people. It's coming and they need to start making these decisions. And now they're starting to kind of um, pull back the curtain or the veil. What changes have you seen in their attitude and approach towards life insurance, as well as life insurance policies or the culture of life insurance? Because now there's gaps that are needing to be filled for things that didn't exist before. Absolutely. It is definitely brought the sense of mortality people back to people during the pandemic. They have seen, whether it's in person, as far as someone they know or a loved one that has been impacted, you see it on the news. You see all the things of all oh, this regular, healthy 40 year old person just all of a sudden was gone in a week, those type of things. Well, that all of a sudden obviously makes you think, well, if it could happen to them, it could happen to me. It could always, it was always that way, but this pandemic has really brought that home to people. And it has, it has truly increased the interest in life insurance. I've probably had more people reach out to me in the last six months about life insurance than I have in the last five years combined. And these were, you know, th this isn't people that I was sending stuff out to. I wasn't advertising for this. These are people that were referrals that somebody had asked 
hey, who's your life insurance with? Or do you know someone who does life insurance? I don't have it and I need it. The other part of that is, and remember what I said at the beginning, uh, many of these people I have talked to had insurance with their job. They no longer have that job. They lost that job during the pandemic like so many people did. And now they're thinking, oh my gosh, right whenever I might need that life insurance, I've just lost it. I don't even know how to get it. I don't even know what to do. I have never had to go out and get life insurance myself. What do I do? And unfortunately, many of those people went out online and bought policies of various different kinds. And you, you can always find a great deal online, I promise. You can find great, great deals. But just like many other things you can buy online, read the fine print, talk to somebody about what you're getting because many times you are not purchasing what you think you are. I've heard somebody tell me, I got a million dollar policy, it's only costing me $20 a month. Why? That's a great deal. Let's review that policy. Okay, that is a really good deal. That's, that is a million dollars for 20 bucks. That covers any accident you might have. Well, yeah, but what if I get sick? Well, no, I don't cover that. You bought an accident. You, got a, you bought a million dollar accident policy. Well, that's not what I wanted. Well, then why'd you buy it? I'm sure it was right there, but what did they buy? Y'all know what they bought? They bought price, right? Mm -hmm. They bought price. They saw a million dollars, they saw $20, they said, that sounds like me. Click, 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 click. Unfortunately, they didn't do all of the legwork it would take someone else to do to make sure that they're finding the absolute best options for themselves. They bought on price, not on knowing what it was really going to provide them. And, and that, is, that is a shame. One of the other things that I did want to mention, you had talked about what made people not purchase it. I mentioned this earlier, but the other thing of it is not want, not want to talk about death, but cost. The other part of that is cost, Andrea. And a lot of times that's a perceived cost. They think it's going to be too expensive. Even if they're just looking for, say, a child's policy. I just ran a quote for my daughter for a whole life policy for $50,000 for a 16-year-old, 20 bucks a month. $50,000 coverage for the rest of her life. That'll never change, and the cost will never change, $20 a month. Come on, who ain't got $20 a month to make sure their child's protected, help build, like I talked about earlier, cash value to make sure that if she ever has that need down the road, that she'll also have some cash value there. You've got to really look at it, though. That wasn't with the first carrier I looked at. That wasn't even with the second carrier I looked at. But the third one I looked at, I said, wow, this is a great deal because they have a policy that for children only, 17 and younger with a 16 year old daughter. She fit right in there, right? Two questions is all there is on there. Pretty easy to answer. So she's pretty much guaranteed to get the policy unless either one of those questions is yes. And the cost will never change on that. It's a, it's a truly a, a great, great deal. Mm. Now that uh, brings up another question that I have about, I'd say six to seven times per year. I get a letter in the mail from a club or an organization I'm a member of, like AAA or other similar organizations, even credit unions. What is the difference between just signing one of these contracts in a mailing versus talking to you and uh, picking something with you? Mm. Great question. Look, I just happened to get one myself. Today. Here it is right here. It's really nice. It's got some, some great things on it. It's got a number. It tells me that for adults, I can get $100,000 for as little as $3.49 a month. Yeah. That's it. That, that's all it costs me. I think I'm going to sign up. I mean, why should I ask any questions? I might as well go ahead and do it, right? I think all I got to do is put in a secret code somewhere here and it's yeah. good to go, right? Well, and, and let's read all of it. No medical exam, simplified application. 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it. Full coverage on the first day. No waiting period. You can buy it a wreck so you don't have to worry about someone like myself. You know, all the money you got to pay me. Right? And then, of course, free information by mail if you were to just fill out this card and send it back. Mm -hmm. What they're really trying to get you to do on situations like this is they're trying to get you to go online or else to send this back and get some more information. Many times what you're doing on a card like this is you are getting an annual renewable term. So 
that three dollars and forty nine cents a month for hundred thousand dollars is what I'm going to pay for the first year, and then after that it's going to go up. There are other policies more directly about what you were talking about. Let's say you are a member of a credit union. Many times members of credit unions get these things in the mail saying, we're going to give you 3000 free. Mm -hmm. And then you can add some more if you want to. What you're really getting there is group rates for plans. And there's going to be a cap on how much you can get. And a lot of times those are very good policies. There's nothing wrong with them. You have to make sure that when you're looking at them, that they're not accident only because sometimes they do offer those. But if they are full policies, then they're going to have some kind of time limit on them. You just need to look at it and make sure what it is. I always recommend calling the number and asking some questions about it. Take some good notes on it. If you have any questions about it, then you can always reach out to an independent broker such as myself and ask some questions. I have two or three of those policies myself. They're such a good deal. Uh, we actually talked about not a life insurance policy, but we actually talked about an a accident policy not too long ago, Shane Carr, that you mm -hmm. could from a credit union. And I told you, do it. It's a great deal. Uh, mm -hmm. they're, they're not all scammed, especially if it's a good, solid quality company like your credit union. Yeah. They're truly trying to offer you great benefits just for being a member. And many times they're able to do that through these companies and they're going to be good companies. The one that I just showed you is a na nationwide company that has been offering children's insurance since a long, long, long time, since the fifties. So they're, they're really good quality companies that are offering these plans many times. You just have to read the fine print in many mm -hmm. cases. You got to make sure that you're getting what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's good advice. It's not necessarily something bad. It's just that you have to be willing to invest a little bit of time, right. and find out whether it's a good, good match for you or not. That's exactly right. Harlan, I think a lot of the viewers, once they, they see the recording, they might think, well, uh, can Harlan work with me? Uh, what, what are the requirements to, to work with you? Well, since we're talking about life insurance specifically, at the time that we discuss it, they must be breathing. Mm -hmm. That is a prere prerequisite. We, we typically uh, have to make sure that they are alive at the time we take the application. Now, there, there is a couple of minimal questions. I, I, I'm, I'm obviously being silly, but if you've been told that you have <laughs> less than 12 months to live, typically it's a hard to find a life insurance policy that will accept you. <laughs> now, I will tell you, I actually offer a policy that's called a guaranteed issue policy. And if you get, even if you've been told you're going to pass away, you can get this policy. There's truly no medical questions whatsoever. But wow. what happens is in the first two years, if you pass away, when you have that policy, then you get 110% of your premium back. So if you mm. paid, you know, a thousand dollars during that time, then they give you $1,100 back and go to your family and say, have a nice day. But once you are past those two years, you get the full face value of that policy, which is pretty daggum awesome. Now these policies, as you can imagine, are a little more expensive simply because there is no underwriting to it. They're just saying, okay, we're going to give it to you. But yeah. in many cases, that's the option people have if they've waited to certain times in their life, whenever they have something that is not going to allow them to get a policy. But yes, sir, I could, I could pretty much talk to anybody. I can give anyone advice on what they may be eligible for, help them decide what is the best options for them. And if nothing else, if they want me to review something they already have or even want to send me a picture of the postcard they got in the mail, I'll take a look at it and tell them, Hey, yeah. Okay. I've seen that one. Or, you know what, that's similar to what I got, or let me check into that for you. And I'll find out if it's a, a real deal and then you'll know whether to proceed with it. Mm -hmm. How about location? Do they need to be a resident of uh, Texas yeah. and also status? Uh, do they need to be a citizen or how does that work? I actually have products that will, no matter what your country of citizenship is, I can help you pretty much anywhere in the world. And the fact that I do have products that will help you there. Uh, there are even people that are living here and are citizens of another country. There are products that we can still help you with to make sure that you have coverage. But one of the things that I have a number of people that are Mexican nationals and there are some real serious taxes on properties that they may have here 
that they own in the states, if they were to pass away, the estate taxes on that are extraordinary. And therefore, we will give life insurance policies for them to cover those taxes because mm-hmm. the, the, the proceeds from life insurance are tax free. Mm-hmm. That's another awesome benefit. Even if you have a million dollar policy, that million dollars that your family gets, that's tax free mm-hmm. proceeds that they get. Wow. So you're not going to have to worry about that, knocking them into the tax bracket and having to give 60% of that to uncle Sam. But yeah, there, there's pretty much not a restriction on that. Now, as you and I both know, as an insurance person, you have to have a license in the state that you're doing business. But if the person's in your state, then they can really have been from anywhere. I do have licenses in a number of other states and we'll be acquiring licenses in all 50 states, probably within the next six months. And therefore, I'll be able to help people down the road in other states, too. But as you guys know, even with my health insurance side, no matter where someone is, I'm going to help them out. I just uh, helped a young lady last night from South Dakota, and I don't currently have a license in South Dakota, but I was able to steer her in a direction and send her to the right place with a number of options that she can just sign up for herself. But I gave her all the directions on how to do that. I just really, really, really want to talk to all the black people out there because I know us do not depend on GoFundMe. Talk to Harlan pick it. I'm telling you, GoFundMe is not going to cover you like you think. There are even ongoing costs to think about. There is a lot that you need to navigate through with someone else. And it just don't wait until there is duress or stress or burdens to start thinking about what happens when you die or your dad or your grandfather. My father passed. And I, I mean, a GoFundMe well, we didn't have to do that because my dad thought about life insurance, but for people who are like, yay, we got 5,000. Well, his funeral, I mean, it was 10,000. So you really want to start thinking about more than even just that, the burial expenses or whatever. And like you said, since life insurance is now changing to where it can help you while you're having living benefits, people with chronic conditions who are having an exit, no one wants a rough exit and no one is able to make decisions when they're half conscious. So, and then the family has got to go through all of that. I'm just telling you guys, talk to Harlan Pickett because he's going to help, help you find something that's unique to what you specifically could go through, what you are going through, things you may not have thought of. Uh, It's his field. He is an expert is just an under, not even really telling all that you can do, but I just have to really say that uh, it's so important not to depend on even our social services because we don't want to drain them either you want to be responsible for your life and the life of your loved ones that's that's my little that's That's my little two cents yeah you're exactly right it's funny how we we talk about the gofundme now but for years it was a barbecue plate right uh we're gonna have a a barbecue dinner for people we're gonna have whatever to raise some funds to to bury uh you know uncle bill or, or whoever it happened to be that's that's what it always was was a barbecue plate or I've even I've even been to families funerals where they're passing the hat at the funeral home mm. while you're there. While you're there for the funeral, they're passing the hat to help cover the the, the burial. That's my gosh, you know that that is just heart wrenching mm. to to me, especially at that time. I, I was selling insurance, mm. and I have family that it just falls on deaf ears because they don't want to talk to you about it. They don't think that it's, it's important. I still got years to go. Well, until you don't. Man, my, my father was, uh, God bless him, he was 59 years old and he passed of, a, of an aneurysm, brain aneurysm. No one expected it. He already had taken care of us, but I just think of how much skepticism there is in a lot of communities where I don't need it, it doesn't apply to me, I'm young or healthy or relatively okay. It's just like you have help out there. You have someone who's willing to guide you through things that are hard to talk about and to cover. But like you said, I mean, it's coming to us all. And you just you just really want to be prepared, especially especially during this time, right. especially and, during this unpredictable time. And being young. Wow. What a what a wonderful blessing that you're young and you can afford so much more for so much less right now. That mm-hmm. is that's the one thing that if, if I can talk, if I can talk to everyone in their 20s and get them to understand the importance of it, they could get so much more for so much less in cost 
it's just amazing how much it goes up as you get older. Mm. And that doesn't mean you still can't afford it. But we're talking about, you know, million dollar policies for 30 bucks whenever you're in your 20s and early 30s. Wow, what a what an incredible deal. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I just uh, I just signed up a family a uh, couple of weeks ago now, and he's 33 years old. and got a million dollar policy for $35 a month. That's 30 year term, 30 years. So at retirement time, he'll need to be considered. But he's got a million dollars for his family. And I got five kids, so he needs all that million dollars, let me tell you. But that's what uh, that was what was important to him. Now, the big deal in this case was is they both understood that both of them needed a million dollars. And his wife's a little bit younger. So hers was $28 a month for a million dollars for 30 years. What a deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. It, and it, I, it's, it's just a great deal at that age. And unfortunately, too many people, unless they have a big family, don't think about it. Because a lot of times that's what it takes is all of a sudden you're adding a child and you realize, oh, wow, I've got to care for someone else now, too. And costs add up real quick. I mean, a coffin here, a this, that, or if you have chronic conditions, we all know healthcare, unfortunately, is not cheap. No. So you got to really think of how far 5000 with the GoFundMe would go or um, you know, money that you happen to have set aside. It's not going to go as far as you think. No, that emergency fund can go quick, real quick, can it? Well, bottom line really is if you care about anyone, anyone, and I do believe we all care about that, about someone in our lives. This is an act of love, really. This is showing that you think beyond just your own skin. And you don't want someone else to really get in deep trouble just because something happens to you. And life is unpredictable like that. I mean, and anything can happen, but uh, we can be prepared in, in these ways. So I, I think that is a, a big takeaway. Yeah. And also a big kind of achievement that the insurance industry has reached for humankind over time. And we should just not take these things for granted because this is something that is only possible if a community of people come together and, and make it happen. And we have these tools nowadays and we need to use them. And I know how difficult it is to not think about it Mm -hmm. I mean, how difficult it is to think about it, but all we can do is use National Life Insurance Month to raise awareness and get converse conversations started. And people, Arlen, if people want to continue a conversation with you, we will post this video everywhere. You will post it everywhere with the contact information, but do let us know right now what's, what are the ways to get a hold of you. Yeah, you can certainly call me, my you know, call me or text me on my my personal line. That's 210-417-2701. Once again, 210-417-2701. You can email me at hpickett at healthmarkets.com. That is healthmarkets with an S dot com. You can also reach me on my Facebook page, which is Harlan Pickett Insurance Broker. You can reach out to me there, send me a message on there, or even my personal Facebook page if you want to go there, Harlan Pickett. You're only going to find a couple of us on there. The other one's my dad. So if you happen to send him a message, then I'm sure he'll pass it right along. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and obviously once this is posted on there, people will have that contact information also. But reach yeah. out to me however you can. If uh, the way that you, you, you fail in all those ways, always reach out to Shankar or Andrea. They know how to track me down. I promise <laughs> they know how to track me down. Absolutely. Guys, take advantage of National Life Insurance Month. Radical act of self-love and self-care. Take care of yourself. Take care of your people. Reach out.